I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. It's Ricky Rick on the beat. I can confuse the co-wash and yeah. We got the juice, yeah. this day every school. We, we talk, talk about sports and that daily report. Ball. Make a big plays in the field on, on the court. Feel my eyes when we coming up short. Nah, nah. Now that's how like we even the score. 8 a.m. when we walk, walk through the door. A's and B's, 100's galore. And now, for a Renna Markel moment. If your girlfriend is upset with you, just tell her to calm down. It works almost all the time. And that has been a Renna Markel moment. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You. Green Bay Packers played a great game led by Aaron Rodgers, who threw for two touchdowns and ran for another. They made the Rams' top five defense look not so top five. Green Bay looked like a number one seed on a mission. They ended up winning 31 to 18. The Ravens and the Bills had a tough game which remained close until costly turnovers by Lamar Jackson in the third quarter. This pretty much set the tone for the rest of the game. The very next drive, Lamar got hurt due to a bad snap and from there, the team just couldn't recover. The Bills continue to be slept on and now have found themselves playing in an AFC Championship game for the first time in a long time. Tom Brady came to New Orleans and did his thing. He threw for almost 200 yards and a couple touchdowns as well. Drew Brees on the other hand, he was playing uncharacteristically as he only threw a little over 130 yards and turned the ball over three times. It is believed that this was Drew Brees' last game, and of course, we'll see Tom Brady in another game close to the Super Bowl. The Browns played the Chiefs way tougher than people expected. 
the Chiefs made a huge play at the end of the half to turn a potential touchdown into a turnover. Mahomes took a hit in the third quarter, which knocked him out of the game. The Browns took advantage of the Chiefs missing their superstar and closed the gap with a strong drive late in the third to convert two fourth downs, making the score 22-17. Head coach Andy Reid led the Chiefs to a victory with aggressive play calling and trusting his backup QB to make key plays in big moments. So enough with last weekend. Who do you have winning this weekend? All right, so Bucks Packers. I got Packers taking it all the way home, but it is Tom Brady. You know, he likes to half out the ref, so... Who knows what he trying to pull out his sleeve. Uh, Bills and Chiefs? Uh, I, it could go either way for real. For, I, I could care less. But I got Bills. Okay. Um, with the Packers and the Bucks, I got the Packers. However, the Bucks did beat them week six in the regular season. However, we all know that Rodgers playoff, way different, way different. different the freak. Bills and the Chiefs? I got the Chiefs if Mahomes comes back. But, you know, hey, they say anything is possible, so. Thanks. We did a poll on Instagram to see how the Hornet family felt about the upcoming games. Here's what they thought. The Hornet family is split right down the middle when it comes to the Chiefs and Bills matchup. When it comes to the Packers versus the Bucks, 58% believe Green Bay will take this game. The Bucks Green Bay game is Sunday at 3 on Fox, and the Chiefs Bills game starts at 6.40 on CBS the same day. Be sure to tune in. All right, enough about the NFL, man. Let's talk about these Wizards, man. Due to COVID-19 and contact tracing, the Wizards have not played a game since January 11th. They don't even have enough players on the roster cleared to start a game. I wonder how the NBA is going to handle the situation. They were scheduled to play the Bucks tonight in Milwaukee. Hey, at least they aren't losing, right? Hopefully they can get back on the floor soon. Tough luck, Wiz kids. Let's talk about Caps. It's Caps. Washington Capitals have gone 2-2 two and two since the start of their new campaign. Despite some holes in the roster and Ovechkin playing in the final year of his contract, the team has playoff aspirations. The team is currently in hot water for breaking the league's COVID protocol and have been fined 100000 by the NHL. What's up with these DC teams not taking the pandemic seriously? So I know by now you heard about James Harden going to the Brooklyn Nets with KD and Kyrie Irving. First of all, what is Katie doing in Brooklyn? It should be over here. But how you feel about that one? Hey, look, man. James Harden's playmaking ability and scoring ability, Max for Kyrie and Katie, it's, it should be unstoppable, and they should be in the finals and champions. No, no doubt. No, definitely. And they're in the East. We'll stop them in the East. Facts. Well, we have to see who beat them on the other side when they get to the finals, but they definitely go. And speaking of basketball, we have a message from our special coach, Chuck. Being a part of Fairmont Heights Athletics is something special. From football in the fall to softball in the spring, no matter what team you are a part of, it means you belong to an elite group of student athletes in Prince George's County. We are winners. We are the best of the best. It's just something special about representing Fairmont Heights that you don't get anywhere else. The sense of pride that embodies no other school can duplicate. was your sports report. Growl! Okay. Anyway, make sure you check in this weekend to see Conor McGregor fight Dustin Poirier Saturday, 10 o'clock. Be there. It's going down. What's up, Fairmont? I'm Teray. And I'm Rihanna. And this is your weekly update. Attention Hornets. 
The 2020 school year yearbook is now on sale for 50% off. It is now 35. And between you and me, they should have been did that because I don't know who is paying $70 for a yearbook. The second quarter grade window will open on Tuesday, January 26th and now close on Friday, January 29th. Make sure y'all get them grades up. Teachers have a professional day on January 28th, 2021. So you know what that means. Two hour early dismissal. Seniors, your senior package payment is due January 29th, 2021. Make sure y'all get y'all money in. Hey Hornets, credit recovery is back. It's for students who need to recover a class in order to graduate or be promoted to the correct grade level. It is also an opportunity for students to take classes to accelerate their learning. If you need to recover a credit or accelerate your learning, complete the form located on the school website. It takes place directly after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. and evenings from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. Attendance is mandatory. Classes begin on January 19th for seniors and January 26th for underclassmen. Go get those credits. This past Wednesday, the 46th president of the United States, Joseph R. Biden, was sworn into office. History was made as the first black woman was sworn into office as vice president. And it was a great occasion and great moment in history. Once again, I'm Tarea. And I'm Rayana, and this was your weekly update. Have a great weekend, Fair My Hearts. On New Year's Day in 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. When he put pen to paper, the President said, and I quote, if my name ever goes down into history, it'll be for this act, and my whole soul is in it. My whole soul is in it. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. Uniting to fight the foes we face, anger, resentment and hatred, extremism, lawlessness, violence, disease, joblessness and hopelessness, with unity, we can do great things, important things. We can right wrongs. We can put people to work in good jobs. We can teach our children in safe schools. We can overcome the deadly virus. We can reward, reward work and rebuild the middle class and make health care secure for all. We can deliver racial justice, and we can make America once again the leading force for good in the world.